Hello, I have just released the DJ Deck Strip, the light version and the pro version, you can see them over here. I was going to make a formal video announcing this, the DJ Deck Strip is blah blah blah, but I figure it's just better if I hit record and show you how awesome this is, real time, with no cuts. Now you might be familiar with this from the DJ Megaset Pro 3, so this is a component of that, but I've updated it, added some new features, and I'm releasing it on its own because there's been quite a lot of requests to have just this particular module. So what is it? It's a custom Max for Live device attached to a bunch of effects that do everything that you need when mixing with music. So in the light version you'll see we have a pretty traditional DJ setup here. I'll just go through some of the features here. We have our EQ, bass, mids and highs. We have our gain, which you can see is the track volume here when I move it. And we have a separate volume, just like a normal DJ mixer. We of course can push these up quite high if we want to get some more uh, oomph going on. These also have mute buttons, so we can mute them all and bring them back in. Up the top we have a pretty basic e uh, filter section, so we have a low pass filter. Let's turn it on. And we have a high pass filter. We can adjust the resonance here for both of these. We also have a both dial. So let me just turn these both on and move this both dial. And you'll see this will control both of them. So you can have one knob to do both filters. Which was quite a requested feature which I was surprised with. Let's turn those off. Let's have a look at the looper section. So if you're familiar with the old looper, that's gone. I've redone this and it's a lot better. It has a punch in and a punch out. So let me punch it in. And out. So it will continue looping from when I hit the punch in to when I hit the punch out. And when I'm ready to release the loop, I just hit the EXT button. Let's do that again. We can halve the loop. And we can do it again. We can extend it out. And we can extend it out even more, this doubles it each time. And you can go as high as you want. We've got a waveform display here. And a pretty big feature if you ask me, some scrolling text. So this was obviously not enough space to fit the majority of people's tracks names, so this will now scroll. Now I just want to show you how I would personally map this out on a controller. So I'm going to turn on my camera here. I have a Novation Launch Control XL here. It's a very, very good controller for using with this set, but you're not limited to just using this. Anything with knobs and sliders will do. I'm going to go into my MIDI mapping mode with Control M. I'm going to choose volume, and I'm going to choose this knob here, or this slider. The bass, I'm going to do this. The mid, we'll go for this one. The high, we'll go for this one. Let's put the low pass filter on this knob, the high pass filter on this knob. We'll put the resonance on this knob, and for both, we'll use this fader here. Let's also have the on off button for the filter be this button in the bottom left and I'm going to attach that to both of the on and off switches. For the in, out and EXT of the looper we'll just use these three buttons. And now we're good to go. I'm going to go out of MIDI mode. Here's our volume. Here's our EQs. Now here's our filters. Let me just uh, Turn them down, turn them on, here's our high pass, here's our low pass, and we've got our resonance here. And if we want we can do both of them. Let's turn those off, let's do a loop. Now we have a perfect one bar loop, or four beats. Very good. Now let's talk about the deck strip 
Pro I've called it, but it's just a big chunky one. This has a lot more features than this light one here. Let's just move it into the focus area. So this one has quite a lot more. Let me, let me go through them. So as well as our usual EQs, I'll get something playing here. As well as our usual EQs, we've got our bass, our mids, our highs. We also have a slide dial here. And what this allows you to do is specify a time and then click slide. And this parameter of the EQ will slide to that value over the period of time. So let's choose one bar. Let's bring the bass down to zero. Let's click on slide. You'll see over one bar, it slides to zero. Let's slide it back up again. And we can go all the way up to 16 bars here. So if I bring this down and hit slide, you'll see the bass is slowly going to fade away. And this is really handy for when you're doing long mixes and you want to fade something out, but you want to play with all these other cool knobs and stuff. So you don't want to spend all your time just tweaking one knob because we've only got two hands, right? What else have we got here? So we've got our low pass and our high, high pass as before. We also have a low shelf filter and a high shelf filter. Now these give you an extra level of control. These are similar to the low pass and the high pass, but they have a very abrupt cutoff point. So you can really shape a particular frequency band of sound. So this is good if you're perhaps using three decks and you've got a third deck where you just want to isolate a particular band of frequencies. Say you just want the hats. Or you want to go down into the mid range. There's also a sweepable bandpass filter. What this does is it boosts a particular area of frequencies or subtracts them. So what we can do is we can bring the gain up here, turn this on, and we can sweep this around. It's a little bit hard to hear. Let me bring the cue up, bring the gain up a bit more. So you can really hear it singing there. But we can also subtract. So I'm going to bring the gain all the way down to zero. And now we can kind of selectively move an area of the frequency range. Let me bring the Q down. The Q is how, how tight the particular range is. Okay, let's turn that off. This also has a reset button because you want to get these back to the exact values quite often. Down the bottom here we have different send return values. So you'll see we've got our gain like we did over on our deck strip light, but we also have the ability to send this to send returns. Um, I need to actually insert a return track so we can see this. Let me add a few. Okay, so now we have three return tracks. I, turn, I need to initialize this now because I've made changes to the set. Now let's send up send A, and you'll see over here on the track, it's sending to send A, send B, and send C. Again. So depending on what you have on your return tracks, you can use this to send those across. Moving up, we have the effect section. So this is definitely one of the core features of this device. So this effect area here is the effect section and we can turn it on with this button here and we can cycle through the different effects by using this dial or we can use the left and right button here. And there's 32 different effects which I spent a lot of time crafting that I think work well with DJ stuff. Now I'm not gonna go through all of them because there is a lot, but let me just turn the delay on. Let me just bring the amount up. Let's bring the feedback right up. Bring the time down. And the A and B do things dependent on what the actual effect is. So let's choose a different effect here. Let's go for... Uh, what's a good one to play with? I do like the spectral resonators and the spectral time. So let's bring this up. Oh, we've got to turn it on, come on Tom. So the time is controlling the time here, or the pitch. And drag it right out. Let's bring it all the way up. So again, we have a lot going on here. A little kind of melodic ones. A lot of fun to be had here. Now the final section of this which adds on to the effects section is the modulation area. You can think of this as a custom LFO that you can apply to any of these parameters here apart from the effect. So the amount, time, feedback, A and B. So I'm just going to go ahead and turn this on. 
we choose our destination down here. Let's go for the amount. And I'm going to bring the amount up and bring the rate up. And you'll now see the amount is moving by itself. Now it's currently going at a hertz rate, which you can see here. I'm going to switch this into sync mode, so this is going in time with the music. And let's choose one bar. And let's change the shape. At the moment it's doing a sine wave. Let's go for a saw down. And what effect will we use here? Let's just use a reverb because it's nice and uh, nice and obvious to hear. We'll bring it right up so it's got a really big reverb. And we can re-trigger this whenever we like. So you can assign this to a button. That's quite a lot of fun to play with. And there's also an offset. So if this isn't actually quite in time with the music, you can use this to kind of fine tune where the start point of the LFO is. Finally, there's a smooth dial here. This is really only useful for when we have random mode. Let me just uh, turn this off. So I'm gonna bring the rate up here. Let's turn the sync off and we'll bring the rate up. You'll see that the random is just kind of picking random values now. So it's just quickly picking random values. If I bring the smoothing up, it's gonna slide between those values. So it's not going to suddenly abruptly change a parameter. So that's pretty much it for the deck strip and the deck strip light. Now again, these are included in the DJ Megaset Pro 3 and I've just also released an update to that. So that is up to version 3.2 and it contains these updated versions of the deck strip. However, if you want these just on their own, I'm asking for 10 bucks. So that's what I've considered the amount of work that I've put in for these here. And you get both of them, the deck strip and the deck strip light. You can use multiple copies of these in your set. You can have four of them, you can have eight of them. Uh, you could try 16. We'll see what your CPU says about that. Um, links in the description. Now finally, I just wanna show you how I would personally map this more complicated deck strip to a setup like this. Um, launch control XL here. So I actually use these when I use it to perform, but I have, depending on the gig, but usually I have two of these and I have four decks. So one section here, one half of this is dedicated to one of these deck strips. Now I'm gonna show you very quickly how I map these together. So I'm gonna go into my MIDI mapping mode. So this is the volume, this is the bass, this is the mid, and this is the high that gives me a nice straight line with my volume here and my bass, my mids and my highs. Next we have the low pass filter and the high pass filter. I put the low pass filter on this dial here, I put the high pass on this one here and then I put the resonance in the middle. So that allows me to move the resonance. I always know this is the high pass because it's the high one and I always know this is the low pass because it's the low one. I also have these set to turn on with uh, this button here. I also have the reset all of the EQs to this button here. And that's, let me just show you why I have that. So let me just say I'm mucking around and I'm doing a mix, blah, 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 and I'm about to drop in the next track. What I can do is I can hit this button and all of the EQs are gonna go to their perfect zero decibel point, which is um, handy. That means I don't have to turn three knobs at once. Okay, next up we have the effects section. So I use these two buttons to switch between the effects. So this one goes up an effect, this one goes down an effect. I then use this one to control the amount. I'm just gonna have to turn the LFO off here. So this one controls the amount. Then I have this one as the feedback, this one as the time, this one as A, and this one as B. So let me just go out of MIDI mode here. That means I can move through the effects by using this. You'll see how we can quickly move between the effects. I can bring the amount up, and then we've got the feedback, time, A and B. So it's kind of like this channel controls the actual effect parameters. This one allows me to bring it in, and this allows me to move between the two. Now you might be asking how I turn it off and on. I use these two buttons here. So this button here is the effect on and I use the one below it to control the modulation on and off. So I can turn this on and off quickly by using this button and then I can bring up the amount, so on and so forth. Next we have the modulation area. So these two buttons are used to determine what the wave shape is. So I'm gonna click on this and that's gonna advance the wave shape. This one is going to decrease the wave shape. 
Down the bottom to the destination, so this is where the modulation is being sent, I use these last two buttons. So again, we use this one to go up and this one to go down. So if I go out of MIDI mode here, you'll see we can change our wave shape with these two buttons and we can change the destination with these two buttons. Finally, I have the amount set to this fader here. I have the rate set to this fader here. I have the offset assigned to this dial here. And I usually use this final dial here as the gain, which is over here. So that gives me two separate controls. I've got the gain control and I've got the volume control here. And again, the reason I have a separate gain and volume control is if I want to send something to a send B, I can turn everything down on the master channel and that means only the return track B is going to be audible, but then I can still fine tune the, vo uh, fine -tune the volume by using this knob here. So that's an example of how I have this set up and I would do this four times on four tracks with four deck strips. And believe me, it's enough to have a huge amount of fun and be extremely creative when you're DJing. So if you're still listening, Thank you very much. I hope you enjoy this. I put so much work into this. And if you're interested, go check out the big brother, which is the DJ Megaset Pro 3. Have a fantastic day.